Ja, ja. ja. Well, a very warm welcome in here. You join us during the play. Introductions here at the Hoops Fix Prime Summer League 2023. It is our women's final live from the Brixton Recreation Centre, brought to you by Stan Sox and Contested.com. Right now, Team Ruby are being introduced. Sevian Witter West 1, Esther Alawade in 2, Shanice Beckford Norton in 3, in 6, Milen Gamavaz, Tenny Okarenkoya in 7, Jesse Ford wears 8. Lavinia De Silva in 11, getting out of order here. Number 10, Nuri Calderon. And number 9, Chantel Charles. That's Team Ruby. Team Ruby. They made it through to the final after a 53-35 victory over Team Diamond last time out. Team Sapphire. Number 1, Chantel Ainton. Number 3, Kat Goldsby. The sharp share from TVC, their captain, their leader. TVC, Imogen Ude, another sharp shooter. It's time from Brent Bulls. Chan Michaels. Jess Beeler wears six. Georgia Gale, GB, and Sheffield Hatters, WBBL star. Checking in, Tiwa Roberts wears eight. Melita Emmanuel Carr wears ten. Number 11, Silvia Almonte. And number 12, Shaquilla Joseph. So they are your two squads that are going toe-to-toe -to -toe this afternoon. That meet in a half court. Hello. Glad to have you spending some of your Sunday with us. And if you're joining us for the first time today, oh boy, are you joining us for a huge one. Sapphire taking on Ruby for the biggest prize we have with the Hoops Express Prime Summer League women's side of the bracket. This is the final. Darren Paul going to bring you all the action alongside my co-commentator, Tahir Ajat. Tahir. Yes. Hey, listen, looking forward to this one. Some serious talent across both teams. You know, we're talking about Shaquilla Joseph, Melina, and Emmanuel Carr. We've got uh, Shanice Beckford Norton, Chantel Charles in the house as well. You know, these ladies are feeling themselves. We've got Georgia Gale in the house. Listen, the names go on. But what an important thing that matters today is putting your hands on the trophy. And these ladies, although it's pre-season and they know that the trophy is up for grabs, they want to win. And that's the caliber of the talent we have on the floor at this moment in time. Yeah, we got players from, you know, we have such a range of, of talent, such a range of where they're playing their basketball. We've got players who play essentially a little bit of local league, perhaps they're not able to play as much basketball as maybe they'd like, maybe we'd like. We've got university players college players in america national league bbl wbbl players playing in high level european competition and for several internationals look you know Shanice, Shanice Beckford norton you know she's back at the lions next season i believe and hey listen i believe i can't remember if that's actually been released yet pretty sure it has i hope it has, I hope it has i'm yeah. in trouble if not I'm sure well it looks like she potentially could be going back but if that's the case euro league basketball. euro league basketball for me best basketball on the planet bar none i don't care men i don't care women women's euro league if you want to go and watch the best basketball right yeah. there you go Put right there for you neck on the line there brother darren i don't care uh, that's what we like to like do. because it's, it's basketball in its purest form Euroleague basketball. That's what it's all about. So yeah, assuming she is back with Lions, and we're pretty confident that she is, um, that's where she'll be playing her trade next year. But of course, Caledonia Gladi Gladiators also in the FIBA Euro Cup this season as well. You know, and the ladies team, same thing. Great competition. The EN ENBL has recruited, of course, Newcastle, Bristol. European competition is now, you know, a definite possibility for a lot of British basketball league clubs. 
Well, look, let's let's focus in on this game right now. I'm trying to figure out which team is actually going to win this one today. Well, let's take a quick moment to mention the path that Sapphire took. They came third in the in the group standings. Then last time they took down Team Emerald by a single point, and it was that Gabi Nikita Naite three point play that settled it with again about 0.7 seconds left on the clock. It was quite incredible, and it was just the start of last week's action. Again, if you've not seen it, treat yourself this evening or throughout the week or whenever you want, but make sure that you check out all the action from week four in addition to some of our great games we've had already today so we are ready to get underway our first final of the day and it is for the women's trophy team sapphire are in the black uniform team ruby are in the red uniforms it's going to be the silver taking on joseph for the tip to international players representing their countries going toe to toe and that first tip goes the way of Team Ruby. Ford can't get it to go early. Lavinia De Silva on the spot. Puts it down. Of course, sister of... Vanessa De Silva, of course. Yep, at the Seven Oaks Suns. Pulls up from the elbow. Couldn't go that time. Great finish, Kat Goldsby. It's Mary Calderon. There's a long way down the floor, still gets the pass. It's a great find. The Silva thought about it. It's with Calderon. Spinning her way inside. See what the call, it was a travel. Of course, if you're just joining us for the finals, the clock will not stop until the final two minutes of play. And that's Melita Emmanuel Carr. Has it stripped by the Silva, wants the foul call, doesn't go. Jesse Ford heads it up the floor. To Calderon drops it off and the silver making it look easy. We have different rules at the foul stripe as well. If you're fouled shooting any amount of points, you're going to go to the line for one free throw and it'll be worth the value of the shot you just attempted as Emmanuel Carr pulls down that board. Good defensive stand by Calderon there on Tiwa Roberts. Joseph though. As doesn't have it stripped but is fouled number seven with that foul that goes on Tenny Okorenkoya playing her basketball last season in Murray State I really like Tenny Okorenkoya she's she's got a great uh, style of play just really fluid with her game and she really has showed out this year's pro -am. that's good so one shot with two points at the stripe we're tied up four. And again, a lot of these women's players on a great stage. As little two-player action. Can't finish there. Calderon a little bit too deep under the basket. Driving the length of the floor. Tiwa Roberts, beautiful righty finish. High off the backboard. And Calderon sent the length of the floor. It's Beckford Norton steps into the triple. Just a bit too strong. You would bank on her hitting most of those that uncontested. Tiba Roberts picks up the pass. No good from outside. Ruby had the lead early. Now they trail. Shanice Beckford Norton finds the silver. No good. Goldsby pulls it down. Ocarin Koya in there being a menace. Team's going to and fro at this moment in time. Getting up and down, seven minutes on the clock. Joseph on the outside. Looks to step in. Goldsby has a lane of sorts. Throws it away though into the hands of Beckford Norton. Calderon in the mid range. Oh, nice pass down to Vanessa, uh, sorry, Lavinia de Silva. Puts it home. All six points for Team Ruby coming from Lavinia da Silva. And two assists, I think we can credit fairly comfortably to Calderon. Goldsby uses that screen. Oh, lovely too. 
from Kat Goldsby. As changes come for Sapphire next time by, we're going to see Georgia Gale oh. checking in as that's oh, a lovely Rick. bit of basketball from Ocarin Koya. The finish doesn't come. And this is what I was saying about Ocarin Koya's game. She's really fluid. Joseph to the baseline jumper. Kat Goldsby. That's good. And 10 plays, 6. Let's see Robert sit down next time. What can Beckford Norton do? Driving in, kicks. Ocarin Koya gets to the basket again. No foul call. Chantel Charles on her feet. In protest is Joseph. Too strong. Send the length of the floor oh. to Ocarin Koya. The mate oh. through contact. Credit the assist, Shanice Beckford Norton. Touchdown pass from Beckford Norton. Hits the target, Ockham Rincoya. This time through the contact, she won't fail. Three point play. Ockham Rincoya to the stripe. And if you saw Beckford Norton, if you've been on the social media, you will have seen her make that pass a heap last week, week before, week before. I mean, that's just regular for her. Distribution. Oh. That's the role of the guard, and Shanice Beckford Norton knows exactly how to play that role. No good on the three-point make. So it stays 10-8. That's a oh, bit of space there. So Emmanuel Carr steps back into the three. Can't go. Good offensive rebound. Battling away. Can get the finish to go. Joseph on the outside. And that's going to go out of play. Just Beeler it was. Just to give her a credit. Battling away down low for Team Sapphire. Ultimately, to no avail. Play it in. Georgia Gale just got a touch on that. So it stays Team Ruby Ball. Substitutions on the floor. Milena Gamavaz checking in, as is Chantel Charles. To the bench, Nuri Calderon and Jesse Ford. Charles. Charles, Charles, of course, you know, formidable opponent if you're guarding her today. Doing it. Norton tries to float it up. Can do a little bit of everything. Finds Beckford Norton again, does Charles. Triples just off the mark. De Silva. No good. And that's going to be played very smartly by Milena Gannon Vaz off the foot of Shaquilla Joseph. Yeah, Team Sapphire not capitalizing the opportunity to get a rebound there. Need to kind of make that count. Silvia Almonte checks in. Who does she come for? Ooh, Shaquilla Joseph. So that's an interesting. Dynamic shift. They give up a lot of height with Joseph being off the floor. Let's see what they do. Right now, it's Beckford Norton raining it in from outside. That's what she does. Well, listen, they've got to, they've got to manage Shaquille's minutes today because, of course, she's going to be leading on that role inside. They've not got much else coming off the bench. So it's Goldsby on the outside, trying to get that three back. Ooh. She gets that three right back. And it's a back to a two-point lead for Team Sapphire. Tries to float it up to De Silva. Not able to finish that far under the basket. Gets out the three. Oh, no good. Gets her own rebound, Ocarin Coyer, and fouled in the act of shooting. Going to go to the stripe. It's going to be one shot. It's going to be worth two. And the foul credited to Jess Beeler. Well, look, Ocarin Rincoya, you know, she started positively. Her mindset's correct. Keep attacking the basket, keep attacking the rack. You know, your shots will come. The fouls are uh, now coming. She's getting to the line. She needs to make this. Hits it. So ties us back up at 13. She heads to the stripe. Sevian Witter checks in for the first time today. Yep, Sevian also has been a big part of the Brixton Top Cats history. In terms of playing. Um, and now. Chan Michaels checks in. Melita Emmanuel Carr heads to the bench. Georgia Gale, GB International, of course, driving in. Finds Goldsby. Ooh. Goldsby dumps it back off. Nice passing play. Michaels not able to finish. Oh no, she's gone down holding her ankle. And that's going to be immediately stopped. A physio on the spot. Well, uh, Jailu, of course, has actually been playing in this year's pro. -am. One of those names that a real talent 
in the WNBL D1 when she's not you know, putting her physio skills to good use. So 11 on the shot clock. We're going to see Chantal Ainton checking in for the first time. Hopefully nothing too major for Chan Michaels. Just want to say a big shout out to the City of London Academy program. The Cola girls have been helping to support this year's Hoop 6 Pro-Am. They're here on time, putting their effort into everything to try and make sure that this event can go on. Chantel included. Oh, the triple sunk Kat Goldsby. After a solid defensive stand, but Goldsby given far too much room. They're going to have to lock her down on the outside. Beckford Norton, no good. sorry, Beckford Norton with the pass. The shot attempt, Sevian Witter. Georgia Gale taking it the other way. She's going to be picked up by Ford. Kicks out, three balls on the way. Ainton, no good. To the hands of Charles. Final minute on oh. the first. Great Damn. find, good finish. Sweet find, teammate to teammate from last season. Charles to Beckford Norton. One point the difference now. Still Sapphire in the lead. That's a good little bit of defense. Ainson though. Puts up the heave. Three pointer. No good. Charles looking for Beckford Norton once more. Thoughts about going herself. Gives to Jesse Ford. Ford uncomplicated. Driving through the middle. Can't finish. Final shot if they want it. I suspect they may go a little bit quicker than that. Trying to dump it off underneath to Bela. And on an island, loses the handle. Witter. Gamma Vaz, rather. She took one look at Georgia Gale and she was like, I ain't driving now. I don't now. want any of that. Yep. So after 10 minutes of play, 16 plays 15. Kat Goldsby, 12 points personal. Two for two from downtown. She's the difference at this moment in time for Team Sapphire as they hold that one point lead, five points, two rebounds. And there's got to be an assist in there, surely, for Shanice Beckford Norton. She's the leading scorer so far for Team Ruby. Been a really, do you know what? Nuri Calderon, she's really impressed me throughout this whole tournament. Already in this one, two assists. She's not yet to trouble the scorers herself. And she's made, been making things work for her team. 16 plays, 15. De Silva leading the way for Ruby. Six points. And like you say, Goldsby, 12 points. Just showing everybody what anybody who's been paying attention to the National League has known for a long time that Cat Goldsby is a major, major problem. Without a doubt, Thames Valley Cavaliers player. Player, leader, legend. Correct. Again, it's going to be a really interesting year for them with Faith Ogwosa off to Dubai to go in and uh, take some new opportunities in life. Be interesting to see how TVC deal that's a good drive no good we are back underway yeah so and, uh, 16 plays 15 here sapphire strong lineup right now for for team sapphire and it's good charles and one play sorry should i say it's a strong lineup for team ruby right now with Beckford, Norton, Charles, and De Silva all in the lineup. But similarly, as I said, sorry, the other side of the floor, T. Will Roberts, Georgia Gale, Shaquilla Joseph. Really this is the three point play. Yeah, I think, to be fair, any combination of players, and we're able to say, Do you know what? It's a strong lineup they've got out there with the abundance of talent we have, even on both benches right now, as Ainton. Hands off to Joseph. The silver, really trying to strip just then. Ayton going in, puts it up, no good on the circus attempt. Beckford Norton eyes up the floor. His side leads it by two. 
early in this second period of play. We're going to see Calderon checking in next time. Oh, De Silva spinning away inside. Witter is there to finish off. I wonder if we credit De Silva with the assist there. I, you can't. She didn't pass the ball, unfortunately. <laughs> Three ball. Oh, banked home. I'm no. sure she will take that. Tiwa Roberts. In a late afternoon here in London. The bank remains open. Three ball. Bedford Norton. Sinks it. That's Tiwa Roberts now about it all the way back up the floor. In a kind fashion. Tiwa Roberts driving in. Draws the foul from Sevian Witter. We're going to see Emmanuel Carr checking in alongside Imogen Yude. Also, Jesse Ford and Niri Calderon check in for Team Ruby. Ainton and Almonte to the bench. Witter to the bench as well for Team Ruby. No good on that shot attempt. George Gale short from outside. So 19 plays 23. The clock stays rolling. Now we've mentioned it before. Just in case you're just joining us about this women's final. 19 plays 23. Kicks out to Chantal Charles. Had it tipped away. We'll stay with Team Ruby. We have a three referee crew for the finals. That's what we like to see. Big shout out to the officials that helped us out this year's Hoot Tricks program. They have been magnificent, giving up their time. And again, it's like it's like what we've been saying about the table officials. And again, massive shout out to them. But the Hoot Tricks program, you get a real level of quality, quality officials, quality stats, quality tabling, and a brilliant set of fans to go to work in front of. Big shout out Kane Henry in the building today, representing. Nice to see him sign for the second season of the Kershaw Knights. Good drive inside, couldn't finish though. The Silver, not happy with the officiating on that occasion. Goes for the long two, hits the long two. I think the Silver still asking for that foul. Something along the lines of watch that slap on the hand there to one of our officials. Four points is the gap. Six minutes left in this first half. Roberts fouled in the act of shooting by Nuri Calderon. Soft foul to give away as well there. It's a silly one for sure. And we're going to see Charles subbing out. Tenioka and Koya coming for her. Especially when it's just a one free throw. One shot from the stripe, gonna be worth three if it goes. Doesn't go. Still wouldn't call that a great foul to concede at this point of proceedings. Over the timeline, Beckford Norton taken all the way with Emmanuel Carr. Kept in very well there by Jesse Ford and off of the hands. Nice hands from Goldsby there, Goldsby. anticipating Goldsby. This, the side step and she got it. Oh. Drive, kick, Calderon goes inside. Oh, halfway to a basket. Underneath to Joseph. Good defense initially. Oh, Kat Goldsby, she doesn't miss many of those. Smiling down the court because she knows. Grand Coyer. Dispossessed and Joseph with the easiest bucket. 21 plays 23. So two points the difference. Three balls on the way. Five points the difference. Shanice Beckford Norton firing. Firing from behind the arc right now. She's starting to find her rhythm. It's a third three-pointer of the game. Three for five from downtown. She certainly has put on a show every single week here at the Pro-Am. 
And this final is shaping up to be no different as Nuri Calderon has it tipped away by Emmanuel Carr. And Calderon, somebody who caught fire from outside last week in particular. That's Beckford Norton. Doesn't go for a three. Roberts very nearly took away her landing space. Goldsby driving the length of the floor. Goldsby can't get enough on the shot. Out of bounds. It's going to stay with Team Sapphire. And change is coming. Jess Beeler to the bench. Oh, sorry. Jess Beeler to the floor. Imogen Ude to the bench. Emmanuel Carr. A bit too strong. That is asking a lot, a lot of anybody that pass from Shanice Beckford Norton. And she heads to the bench. You could see immediately she got that ball head up looking for the next opportunity to find a teammate. I felt in that situation though a little bit forced because you could see the defenders were retreating at that moment in time to be in a better position to stop the play. Or oh, as you saw, Goldsby sinks it from outside. It's back to two. 24 plays 26. That's another triple for there, for that's 15 points. Nuri Calderon out the break. Trying to drive inside, foul. It's been called on the floor, foul on number 10. That's Melita Emmanuel Carr. Like you say, Kat Goldsby, 15 points in the contest so far. She is just something else when it comes to scoring. As Rinkoya trying to find her way inside, fouled by Goldsby. Still a two point game, 1 minute 40 on the clock. Her first personal. Third team foul. And that clock does stay running. No good. On the freebie. To tie it up or even take the lead. Emmanuel Carr. They go inside to Joseph. Joseph using her strength and her skill. Can't finish though. As the silver. They've got to get over the timeline. Tiva Roberts on the spot. And that's been tapped away again. Joseph all over it. That's Georgia Gale to check in. I think she's going to come for Tiba Roberts. Two seconds get over the timeline. They do. It's with the silver. Under a minute to play. Way under a minute to play, in fact. It's Gamavaz from the corner. Oh, good. A little bit too much backboard on that attempt. Clock stays running. 30 seconds for Team Ruby to do something positive. George Gale nearly had that stolen. Jesse Ford. Good ball movement. Ocarin Koya. Lost the footing. Travel. You know what? When those moves start... Uh, you know, being executed for Ockham Rinkoya. She is going to be dangerous. Emmanuel Carr with three to shoot, going through. Doesn't drop, as does that. 24-26 is your score at the end of the first half. Team Sapphire are in the lead. They're edging it by two against Team Ruby. If you think this is going to do anything other than go absolutely to the wire, then I've got some, I've got some terrible news for you. It's going to the wire. Yeah, well, I hope so. Of course, we've got 20 more minutes of action left to play. Cat Goldsby, three for three from downtown, six for 10 from the field overall. Three rebounds also to a name for Team Ruby. Shanice back for Norton's, keeping them within touching, touching distance, 11 points. Three rebounds from her at this moment in time. We've got a great ball game on our hands. And of course, we're at the halftime break. Yeah, two great scorers going toe to toe there. Goldsby and Beckford Norton, they won't be guarding each other too much, but they are certainly great fun to watch on the floor. And Goldsby, one of those players that's like, I want to see her in WBBL. I wouldn't mind that. That'd be quite nice. Yeah, great play. She's showing out right here. So let's see how she gets some for the remaining half of the, the game. 24 plays, 26. So what do you want to see? 
What do you want to see from Team Sapphire in the second half? Uh, Team Sapphire down by two. I just think, look, they've got to keep, continue to play the way they are. Obviously, they've got to work to get stops where possible. It's tough. Uh, I think they don't real have like a, you know, a flow in their game. Like there's moments where individual players are getting opportunities to score, whereas Ruby are flowing a little bit more. However, Ockham Rinkoya, you know, she's trying really hard and some of the moves are wonderful, but she's also causing her team, you know, a lot of points at this moment in time. She's taking really tough shots. So team, like we said, just a quick, quick peek at the index. If you're an index kind of guy, Kat Goldsby leading the way. She's got an index of 14, the highest of her team, the highest of anybody overall. What does that mean? Basically, it means that she is an efficiency machine. Three of three from outside, six of 10 overall. Yet to go to the strike, but she has got three rebounds in the contest. As we've got two athletes going toe to toe. I think this is for t shirts for people in the crowd. All part of the experience here, you can get the Hoops Fix Prime Summer League when we return in 2024. If you want to know about all of the upcoming information about that, well, there's one place to go hoopsfix.com. Make sure that you make that part of your routine, part of your ritual. Let's go and check up all of the events that Hoopsfix have going on and all of the action and news for players, British basketball players around this country and around the world. We're across all the social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and I believe even Threads. So make sure that you are following and that you are across all the social media for Hoops Fix men and Hoops Fix women. So as it's final, I think both teams are getting a little bit extra rest so that they are really fresh to go in the final 20 minutes. That's another happy customer here at the Hoops Fix Prime Summer League 2023. Not only, not only, did this youngster get in for free? They've got to put on a show for the people here and then they leave with a t-shirt. What, wow, what a great Sunday. Listen, for the culture, uh, for the UK, for the community, that's what we're all about here at Who's Fix. And I tell you, we mentioned it in the previous game, it's only gotten busier. Standing room only. Standing room. Listen, yeah, women's let me see if we can get a camera lady to, where is she at? Pan the camera so they can see the crowd. We want everybody to see the crowd right now in this gym, in this arena. It's simply packed. So we got both sides ready to go. There, there you we can go. See, it. see, standing Rich. room only here in Brixton. This is what basketball is all about in the UK. People coming together. You see friends you ain't seen in a long time. You know, we got people hugging. We got people smiling, laughing, rejoicing, all in the name of the love of the game. It's British basketball, baby. Yeah, the great and the good have been out. And so, you, you say that. It's so true. It's so nice just to be able to come to events like these and catch up with people that you haven't seen throughout the season, maybe. For even longer than that. We're back underway. 20 minutes to play to settle this women's series hit and the Hoops Fix Prime Summer League 2023 as Beckford Norton can't go from slightly longer than the mid-range. It's great to see Emmanuel Melita Carr back in action. She looks like she's moving well obviously had a few injuries. Three ball from outside. Looks like she's ready to get back involved in the game again. Three ball coming up from Chantel Charles. So the that's a turnover. It's team Ruby back in possession. Good ball movement. Beckford Norton driving in. Dumps off to the corner. Three ball from Milena Gamavaz. Doesn't go. And Emmanuel Carr with the rebound. Dumped off down low. Roberts. 
a three point advantage now for Team Sapphire. Long two doesn't go from Beckford Norton. As Calderon up in the work on defense. Finding it interesting that Beckford Norton's looking to go for those long twos as opposed to a three pointer. As Emmanuel Carr loses the footing, keeps the handle. Nearly had quite an unconventional assist there. In the end, didn't go. Then again, Mavaz. Hands off to Beckford Norton. Has shooters open, goes from the top of the key. Off the mark. Chantel Charles ties us up. 29 plays 29. Uh, we've had a number of triples so far in this game. Both teams really looking to shoot the ball from the deep. Georgia, Georgia Gale. Gale. Oh, banks it in. She didn't mean that. <laughs> she didn't call bank. Take the three points away. Ooh. It's two plays, 29, as that gets thrown away. Bedford Norton is looking super comfortable out there. This is Beckford Norton's court, and we're just all here to watch her play at the moment. It is, except for that shooting that we've seen in the last couple of minutes. Uncharacteristic. Every other point of her game, for sure, I agree. The silver just gets into Beckford Norton. In the open lane, gets closed off, finds Gamma Vaz. Can't finish from the mid range, though, somehow ends up back with it for Team Ruby. Chantel Charles on the outside. Beckford Norton thought about going up. Is guarded by Goldsby. Got to get the shot away. Yeah. It's fouled in the act of shooting. Goldsby way too close there. Silly foul from Cat Goldsby. That's a real. Who's that NBA? Oh, that's Harden. 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 Yeah, he generates that sort of contact. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a Harden foul, that. Back for Norton. Ready to go one for three. At the stripe. Off the mark. Had the opportunity to tie us up. Wasn't able to hit. Georgia Gale shows her class. Just drives down the lane. Guarded all the way. Didn't matter. Put the lefty finish in. The silver. That's the spin moves. Too low on the attempt again, Joseph. Solid defensive stand. Now it's Goldsby, pulls up at the elbow, just off the mark. To the hands of Charles. Bounce pass ahead to Beckford Norton. And that's gonna go the way of Sapphire. I think the silver looking to sub out. It's gonna be replaced by Ford next time. And you get the opportunity. Gale on the outside, finds Goldsby, puts up the triple, off the mark, pulled oh, down by Charles. 100% three-point record in the game's gone now. Step back, oh, thought about a three, dumps it off inside, the silver puts it down. She's going to go to the stripe to make the three-point play, and then we'll retire to the sidelines. Tiba Roberts it is. Committing the foul. Well, what I will say is Lavinia's been a little quiet since, obviously, quite that, that quick burst to start the game. But now she's getting back into things. Nice and one play for her here. Takes a tally to eight points personal. Could be nine after the free throw. Green quiet. And she's got eight rebounds. It goes down. Count the three-point play. Green quiet into the game in place of Gamma Vaz. Did you say eight rebounds? Eight rebounds. Nine points, eight rebounds. She has come to play today. It's a nice move inside. Not able to finish though. Emmanuel Carr. 34 still plays 32. Sapphire lead. Oh, Cat Goldsby, strong play. Last touch. Tenny Okarinkoya. So substitution has been made by Tim Sapphire and it is Joseph heading to the bench. Bieler 
comes in for her. 3.50 left in this third period of play. As George Gale not able to catch up with that play. We're going to see Sevian Witter coming in next time. Back for Norton, spin move at the elbow. Can't go. Charles gets the rebound. Short from Beckford Norton. Frustration starting to creep in for her. Georgia Gale. Oh, beautiful. Basket. Really excited to see what's in store for the Sheffield ladies program. Of course, now taking their place at home at the Park Community Arena, the Olympic Legacy Park in Sheffield. It's exciting times for, for basketball in Sheffield after its long and fruitful history, especially with the amount of success that they've had on the ladies' side. Jess Beeler with the foul. Nuri Calderon heads to the bench, sending Ocarin Coyer to the strike. We're going to see Yud checking in next time as well. Doesn't go. So it remains a four-point game. Like you say, the hat is extremely decorated side if not the, one of the oldest women's clubs in the country. And for so long, an absolute standard bearer of women's hoops in this country. Like I say, the D2 hatters as well have been dominant. Charles, with the post moves, not able to finish, does get the rebound though. Battling it away from Bela. No look pass to Jesse Ford. And Ford in trouble. The double had come. And she thought that Beckford Norton had dropped into the corner. She had not. Ends up throwing it away. It's a four point ball game. Sapphire up over Ruby. 36 plays 32. Bela. Has it denied? Has it stripped, in fact, by Ocarin Coyer? Georgia Gale saw in her eyes what she was after, though there's a travel, and that's going to go back the way of Ruby. One ten to play in the third. Long two, Charles drains it. 36 plays, 34. Imogen Yude, oh, 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 immediate response. Goes one better, 39-34. Back for Norton, fouled in the act of shooting. Going to go to the line. And that will give Sapphire probably the last possession. Fourth personal foul. And it goes. The gap now. Reduced ever so slightly. 39 plays 34. Imogen Yu. Finds Gale. Tend to shoot it, Gale. Skips it to Bela. Jesse Ford. Oh, she's got the lane. Closes. She was still able to get the shot away. And that's going to do it. 39 plays 36 at the end of three. Sapphire in the lead. They're being pushed all the way to the line by Team Ruby. Three points the difference. Like I say, this one is going to go all the way to the wire. And like you say, Bela is the only player in any kind of foul trouble. Otherwise, most other players keeping it pretty clean. What have you seen in that? first 10 of this second period still quite a sloppy game of basketball if i'm honest with you uh, they're both teams getting up and down you know a lot of rush shots four shots at times and when they're made it's good but generally you know we've got, to, we've got to sell things down a bit so that you can close this game out in the fourth and final quarter Ten to play quite a quite a low score so far 39 plays 36 uh, Stan's getting the crowd hyped over some more t-shirts. 
I think, in a way, we could have expected this. Two teams will to win. Well, of course. Cancelling you know. each other out. I think they, they are quite balanced. That's, that's the best thing about it, you know. And for the viewers at home, the viewers here at the pro app, that's the, you know, that's what we want. Oh, my God. What's going on? Oh, my goodness. Backflip for T-shirts. Yeah. And we're on Kizzy Spence here from the Oakland's Wolves. <laughs> see, that's what I want to see. I want a little more celebrations in basketball. We can't just have the flexing. We can't have the you're too small, mind your head, three goggles. No, no, no. I want to see backflips. <laughs> I want to see the occasional, if you're wearing knee pads, I want to see the occasional knee slide. Yeah. Give me a little bit more. The swallow dive, maybe, on that. <laughs> Shaki Kuki, that was the player who used to do the <laughs> swallow dive in football. Just jump up and land on his belly. It's absolutely. How his managers didn't ban that? Huh? How his managers didn't ban him from doing that? It's yeah, outrageous. Right. It's because he bounced right off the floor, that's right. <laughs> 10 to play, three points the difference. 39 plays, 36 here. Team 6 Prime Summer League 2023 Women's Final. We've got one more game to play today. Hoop Space taking on Glacier Boys. As the Silvers back onto the floor. He sat for stretches of the third, which is no bad thing. He should be nice and fresh here. It's Goldsby. That's too much room. Puts it down. Going inside, can't finish. Three balls on the way, Charles, just off the mark. Forty-one plays thirty-six. No good. But a foul in the act of shooting. She's heading to the stripe. So it's gonna be one shot, it's gonna be worth two points. And it's the silver at the line. No good, too strong. Charles, though, pulls it down. Opportunity to make more of it. Three ball. Way too strong, though, that time for Santel Charles. It's Jas Bieler over the timeline. 41 plays, 36. Goes underneath to Bieler. Finishes. Ahead of the defense from Ocarin Koya and Ruby. They do not want to let this get too much further away from them it's got that feeling of a game where if you give up a big lead you're not getting it back as the three ball goes from Beckford Norton that's more like it 43 plays 39 it's a four point ball game Cadiz now I've got 16 points total four rebounds one assist Almonte keeping the handle under significant pressure. Joseph too strong. Fan favourite Shaquilla Joseph as it stays alive. My goodness. You know, I'm showing that, off the will to win. I, I see a lot of Shaquilla Joseph's triple, you know, her three point shooting. When she fires up, it's always quite uh, a long shot. So it always tends to bounce. Uh, quite acutely off the off the rim I think she needs to just add a little bit more height and spin to her shot for that to be a more consistent maybe I'll speak to her about that afterwards let's see what she says to you me. Got that, I know. <laughs> uh, listen literally like people are sitting on the floor trying to find space in this gym right now I can only imagine it's gonna get bigger and a lot more people making their way over to Brixton to see the finale of this game and the men's game as well Good attempt at deny defense. Doesn't work though, it's with Goldsby on the outside. Shots up, off the mark from Yoon into the hands of the Silver. Four points still the difference, seven minutes left in this final. Again, the clock will stay running until the final two. The Silver, long two, just short. Into the hands of Joseph. We all know what to watch for with her three point game now. Going inside, 
De Silva gave her a big shove, didn't get called for it. Beckford Norton skips it across, mid-range Jay Ocarin Koya doesn't go, stays in play. No good. Finally, Beckford Norton puts it down. Start packing. <laughs> Two points is the gap, 43 plays 41. Confusion as to why, I think, I think they're a bit confused. Why didn't that No, well, it, get, it didn't go out of bounds. It didn't go out of bounds, it didn't hit a stanchion. It didn't hit the stanchion. Did the, did the, whistle, did the whistle go? No, the whistle oh. did not blow, play to the whistle. What do we do? We play to the whistle. So it's two points of difference. Timeout has been taken by the team in the black uniforms, Team Sapphire. Again, this is a closely run thing so far. 5-4 in the period in favour of Team Ruby. Goldsby still leads all scorers. Back for Norton. Partner here heals with, oh, in fact, it's just updated. Back for Norton, leads all scorers. She's on 18. Cap Goldsby on 17. Goldsby, an efficient 53%. Three of four from outside. Uh, I think that means that she hasn't hit from outside so far in this second half. Yeah. Goldsby still leading the way for Team Sapphire. Both teams really balanced uh, in their stats at this moment in time. One thing that really sticks out to me though, Team Ruby, 23 offensive boards. And they've had 14 second chance points. Joseph underneath, good on the find, Melissa Emmanuel Carr. Silver comes off inside. No good on the attempt there. Ocker in Koya. Gale floats it up. No good. And Shanice driving hard the other way. Tries to send it through the legs of Emmanuel Carr. It would have picked up maybe Gamma Vaz. In the end, didn't get through. Beckford Norton on the handoff. Can't get the finish to go. And now it's a five on four break the other way. Robert sends it inside. Manuel Cart not able to finish. Joseph on the spot at the second time of asking. Shaquille Joseph, eight points, nine rebounds. Four assists. Oh, Beckford Norton sent around a long way. Don't worry about it. Hits him with the reverse. That's 20 on the board. So again, they're managing that gap. It's back to four. They need a stop. Georgia Gale doesn't allow that. The two is good. She's going to go to the line for one more. At what point, here's a question for you, I think about this a lot, at what point when a player's blown by you, do you just allow them the two? Because two things, especially in this format, hit me out. One, she's about to go to the line to shoot for one more. And two, that clock stays running. And she hits that. So you're in a hole, you've got a foul, and the clock is slow. Oh, what you're right in saying it's, it's a very situational moment, really. I think, like, look, in these kind of games... Three balls on the way. Jesse Ford can't go. Sorry to cut across you. Yeah, it's all right. In these situations, depends on the scoreboard as well. Uh, right now, if you're in the lead by, like, seven points, you probably don't want to give any easy shots away. Probably try and make a play for the ball if you foul them. You're going to earn it. That's fine. But, you know, if you're in the lead by a few points, you don't, you don't necessarily need to foul. Let them go by. You'll get the ball back. Take your time. Great run the clock. Strip by Goldsby. Big shout out Mo Salawade in the house, re-signing with the London Lions this season. All the names in the building today. Yeah, we're in Brixton. The great and the good come out. Yeah, we've even like got... Prime Summer League. Yeah, we've even got Dan Clark, Surrey Scorchers GM in the house today as well. So, uh, what's the call? It is a foul. 
Who was that called on? I think called on Georgia Gale. So foul on the floor. 2.55. Seven points the difference. Again, Ruby taking their time to get this ball inbounded. De Silva. Still De Silva. Kicks to the top. Good ball movement. Three balls on the way. Oh, that's money. The silver hits from outside, and it's a four-point game. There, when you need it. Lavinia De Silva making another big play. Manuel Carr, talk about big plays. Puts it down. Beckford Norton wanted to travel. It was not coming her way. That's Beckford Norton. Fails to put it down. Gale up the floor. Nuri Calderon got a hand in there. More important work from Calderon. You know, she needs Bedford Norton, although like we've you know been singing her praise that time. One thing she needs to work on is her efficiency. Without a doubt, she's had really she's had 20 shots in this game and she's shooting less than 40 percent. She's about 37 percent right now. Oh Gail with a great save. I don't know how that was in the backcourt. Shuts up. No good. That's Charles over the timeline. Fouled in the act of shooting. So the clock will stop. She's going to go to the line to shoot two. Neither side anywhere close to team fouls. That will probably come to bear. Especially if these two drop. 52 plays 46. This would make it a four point game if they both go. The first does. Georgia Gale patrol in the back court now. Second is off the mark. That's going to go. Team Sapphire. It's Emmanuel Carr with a minute 30 on the clock over the timeline. Picked up by Neri Calderon. One more score from Sapphire might settle it. Oh, Emmanuel Carr shows off her class, shows her skill. Finds Joseph underneath, can finish. And that's going to go the way of Ruby. 109 left to play. I think for Ruby, this is the five they want on the floor. Beckford Norton. Oh, driving in. Coast to coast. Can't finish. Too strong. This is what I'm saying. This efficiency. She's got to improve on it. Maybe she's just having an off day. 20 points, but an off day still. Yeah, these are definitely looks that she's getting. She's generating for herself. Doing the hard part. You'd think. Given that she's such an elite scorer. Gale. Picked up by Calderon. Dumps it off down low. That's a nice invention from Gale. Trying to dump it off inside to the cutting Emmanuel Carr. 48 seconds on the clock. Still five points the gap. It's time for Ruby, but not a lot of it. They need a stop. And that's a foul. Slower any way you can. And pray she misses at the stripe. Just the second team foul for Ruby. Georgia Gale to the line. Has been there once before. And you'll never guess what. She made it. Off the mark on her first. This to make it a six point game. She puts it down. So two quick fire threes and a stop. We'll tie it. Oh, that's been turned over. Tiwa Roberts taking it up the floor. Guarded all the way by Beckford Norton. Emmanuel Carr slowing things down. She's been picked up by Ford. The double comes, the triple. It isn't enough. Great pass inside. Roberts travels 23.9 seconds telegraphed that pass on the opposite side of the floor made it really obvious where the ball was going to go and obviously in that situation it's easily picked up a 
That's Charles driving through. That was a bit of a force there. I think she was hoping that the foul was going to be called. <laughs> Those two big sisters, man, they're going at each other. Throw the ball, cheeky little slap. Oh, uh, anybody else do that in a game, they're probably scrapping. How about these two? Real good friends on and off the court. Team Ruby, they take time. 17 and a half seconds to play. Six points the difference. Of course, we've got some all important awards coming up right now. And of course, we'll be awarding this year's MVP of the tournament for the ladies competition. And of course, the trophy. That's right, MVP award after this game, along with the trophy celebration. I wonder if they know. Well, I mean, no, yeah. <laughs> Remember, it's not just about today's oh, game. Of course not. It's for the entire body of work through this five weeks at the Hoops Fix Pro-Am Summer League. And if you want to share your thoughts with us, make sure you do in the chat or on social media at hoopsfix.com. Let us know who you think this year's MVP will be, not just of this final game, of the whole five weeks of the Pro-Am. We want to know what you think. Drop it in the chat right now. Who is this year's Women's Hoops Fix Pro-Am MVP? Oh, that's a big moment. Not able to turn it over, though. They're still battling. They're still digging away, Team Ruby. We wondered if the scoreline might be a little bit closer, but they stay battling into the hands of Goldsby. Got it away from Calderon. Holding it away. Fouls everywhere there. Called on <laughs> Silva. And then Carr got clattered about, oh, uh, sorry, Manuel Carr got clattered about, I don't know, four or five times. Just ask, can we just call it the first time, please? Uh, yeah. That's agreed. 11.3 left in the game. Held by Joseph. And again, their cleanliness throughout the early going has come to hurt them. Them being Team Ruby. For Team Sapphire, this is great, except for consistently being whacked by opposition players. And that's going to send Joseph to the stripe to shoot two with 5.2 seconds left on the clock. So six points the difference. This to surely settle it now. First goes. As does the second. Two of two at the strike from Joseph. They kick it up the floor to Beckford Norton. Three ball is off the mark. Gets her own rebound. Pulls up again. And at the buzzer, it doesn't go. Your champions in 2023, the Hoosnicks from Summer League is Team Sapphire. They take it 55-47 after a brilliant, brilliant matchup with Team Ruby. So here, talk us through the game. Yeah, it looked real entertaining game to watch, you know, both teams going at it. Lots of individual talent on the floor, but, you know, one team were taking meaningful shots and the other team were taking, you know, forced shots. And as you can tell, Team Sapphire came out on top, deservedly so. Yeah, I don't think anybody can have any complaints about the result Team Sapphire they had a slightly difficult time of it in the second period but this second half they have been far and away the better team they made their shots they made their shots when it really mattered and they come away 
with the victory. And now on the floor, it's filling up for our trophy presentation. A lovely MVP trophy. And our women's trophy as well for our winners, Team Sapphire. So a great tournament being played by Team Ruby. Take nothing away from them. They played a brilliant final. And a brilliant, brilliant tournament as well. So the MVP honors first up. And it is the main man himself. Sam Netta. So it's not just the game, it is the tournament MVP. I know. I know something you don't know. <laughs> I think it could only be one player. Shanice Beckford Norton, 16.8 points per game. She really led by example, and I tell you what, entertained the crowd to no end throughout this tournament. Didn't come away with the goal today, but has come away as the season MVP from the Hoops Fix Brown Summer League 2023. Excellent work, Shanice Beckford Norton, inspiring so many young people men and women, boys and girls to play the game. Tenacious, attacking, tough young lady. Long may it continue for her. Long may she continue to inspire here at the Hoops Fix Prime and further afield. Absolutely going to be playing her trade in European basketball for the Lions. If it is in fact, confirmed she is re upped with them. An absolute superstar on and off the floor. And the co captains for Team Sapphire are just about to be handed over the trophy. Shaquilla Joseph and Melita Emmanuel Carr, Team Sapphire, raise the trophy. Oh, that's. That's no, look at those confetti cannons. I'm not sure Sam was. Uh, I'm not sure Sam was uh, expecting that from the cannons there. We've been planning this moment, and oh, that was a good confetti cannon. That was brilliant. The so Hoops Six Prime Summer League 2023 Women's Champions Team Sapphire. They've been in some tight spots. They've had to battle their way through. They beat Team Emerald by a single point in the semi-finals. And they were made to work for it against Team Ruby here in the finals. That's going to do it for our women's final and from our fifth game of the day. That leaves us with just one more matter of business to attend to. It's the men's final. It's coming up soon. So make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss tip off. Hoop Space taking on the Glacier Boys. The Hoop Six Prime Sunday 2023. Live it's about from to go Rest down, Darren. It's about to go down. Don't miss it. Here we go. Brought to you by Stan Sox and Contested.com. We appreciate you spending your Sunday afternoon with us. And we've got one more game. We've got plenty more action where this one came from. We'll see you very shortly for our men's final. Hoop Space taking on the Glacier Boys. But the final word has to be about Team Sapphire, your women's champions in the Hoop Six Prime Summer League. 2023.